Joining us now is Julianne Stans, who talks, is here talking about her book, Start with Jesus, from Loyola Press. Thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. Today. It's good to be here. Um, let's get right into the book. Uh, if you could maybe um, talk to us about how we do that. How do we start with Jesus and then maybe uh, go from there out? That's a great question. Um, part of the reason why I wrote this book was to inspire parishes to see that the fire that they have in their parishes can be renewed and rekindled if we start with the person of Jesus Christ. Um, what he asked us to do, how he wanted us to form people, um, because one of the premises that I uh, really state quite strongly in that opening section of the book is that for our parishes to renew, be renewed, we have to be renewed. And we can only be renewed if we start with Jesus and allow him to urge us out. Any tricks to finding a way to get better in touch with, with Jesus in our lives? Yeah, I think prayer, the sacraments, uh, tending mass, all beautiful ways of growing in friendship with Jesus Christ. But one of the things that I've noticed in my work with Catholics in parishes for the last 12 years is how few Catholics are actually able to share their story of faith and talk about how God is moving in their lives and to develop an awareness of how they can share that with others, especially those who are going through a tough time or have stopped practicing their faith. And so I often tell people, get in touch with your own story of how God is moving. And, and the premise actually as well, once we do that, we can, we can then bring that to the community too in the parish too and, and, and kind of start that transformation as well. Absolutely. I, you know, the gospel is our story of salvation history. And so if you're a catechist, for example, it's very difficult to teach young people about the faith if they can't see how the faith is moving in their own life. And so I believe that just like uh, conversion happens from the inside out, uh, we can be renewed from the inside out if we uh, get in touch with our need to have a friendship with Jesus once again and live from that need. Yeah. And, and people can see that in other people too. Once mm -hmm. you communicate with somebody and they can see the light of, of Jesus in them if, if they're in tune with that. Oh, for sure. And, you know, I go back to this quote, and it's been often shared because I think it's so true. Pope Paul VI said that, you know, young people listen less to teachers of the faith. And if they listen to teachers, it's because they are witnesses. There's, people can tell how authentic and real you are about your faith. And if the faith is lived and expressed in a real healthy way, then it puts them in touch with their own desire to have meaning and longing. Okay. How's the book um, set up, uh, Start With Jesus? So um, the book is very simple. So I want, to, I, want to, I want to state that I wanted to write a book um, that my husband and I could actually read. So I find that um, books that are written for parish renewal often are speaking to leadership. And I think that's important. But the message to my husband, for example, is this is your church. Uh, step up and lead. Lead the church that you love and be a leader in this church. And so it take, it's, it's a track that any person can kind of look at the book and say, where am I at? And it splits in a sense. Uh, you can read it with your parish team, your parish council, but you can also um, grab a small group of moms and really explore it together. Yeah. And I... I in parishes too, that's always the trick too, to, to, to get people involved um, and mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, have people step up and something like this could help in that process. Absolutely. I think for a lot of Catholics, um, especially at this time in the church, where we're faced with a lot of turmoil and what seems like crisis, the message in the book is just very hope filled. You can do this. Uh, Jesus is with you. And learning from Jesus as the master is always the best teacher. And so if you can learn from him, you can share that with others. And I know, Julianne, you're, you're involved in the USCCB, too, and the uh, Committee on Catechesis and New, Evangeliz mm -hmm. New Evangelizations. Talk to us about your, your work in that. Yeah, I've been involved with the Committee on Evangelization and Catechesis now for a number of years. Um, our most current chair is probably well-known and familiar to a lot of your listeners and your viewers, and that's Bishop Robert Barron. Okay. And we've been working on a project recently, actually, um, regarding how to reach out to those who... Um, are the disaffiliated or the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, those that check um, the box nun in terms of their religious affiliation. Yeah. Are you surprised by that? Because I, I saw that poll too when it came out and mm -hmm. uh, those not affiliated with any religious, their numbers are growing while other Christian religions, Catholics right. are, are declining. I, I think because I'm in parish life a lot, the numbers didn't surprise me. Um, what surprised me about the recent data was um, the registered numbers of practicing Catholics and the data on the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. It's clear that we have to emphasize the teaching of the church much more 
um, stridently in regard to the real presence. But we also have to find a way to help young people who are looking for meaning and longing in their life be able to see themselves in the Eucharist and bring those points together. Yeah. Uh, coming up with things like that and, and meeting in, in these uh, committee meetings too, how, how important is, is this work to be able to, and especially with what you said too, with the recent polls and things like mm -hmm. that, uh, to, to, to make that connection with people in the parish and, and to get them more involved and to educate them. Mm -hmm. Our people in our parishes are people of generosity and are of goodwill, and they have a hunger in their heart to see their children and their grandchildren come back to the faith. And so any tools that we can put in their hands, I think is important for us. But I also think it's important to develop them as leaders. Um, if you look at research, it tells you, you know, where our Catholic population might be at in terms of their understanding of the faith. I think we can do a better job evangelizing that population and catechizing them. Thank you, Julianne, for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. Start with Jesus from Loyola Press. Can you find the book there? Yep, you can yeah. find it at all Catholic bookstores, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, online. Um, I hope it's uh, something that your listeners, viewers would be uh, excited to read. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome.